I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Pat from Sabaton. And this is Sabaton History. The U.S. Marines, who got the nickname Devil Dogs, made a serious impact towards the end of the First World War. And we thought that Devil Dogs would be a perfect title for a Sabaton song, and the story was really good. The U.S. Marines have been training for fighting the Great War in France since the U.S. declaration of war on Germany, April 6, 1917. They were a rather small force, not even 14,000 men strong. But the U.S. Marine Corps could look back on a long and proud history of service. The soldiers of land and sea had served U.S. interests overseas in places like the Philippines, Haiti, and even the coasts of China. But now, they were sent out to fight in a global war of which the U.S. had only been a passive spectator. And their enemies were not poorly trained insurgents, but battle-hardened soldiers who'd seen years of active combat. To prepare themselves for modern war, the Marine Corps had included mostly French battle doctrines in their training, especially the new French emphasis on move and fire tactics. But with the Marine Corps preference of the smaller platoon formation, Equipped with rifles, light support artillery and machine guns, and rifle grenades, the Marines soon at least looked like a modern fighting force. And yes, before you comment, the American version of the Showshot light machine gun was terrible. But packing serious firepower while being as mobile as possible was of prime importance to the Marine Corps style of fighting. Anyhow, they did not simply just copy French doctrines though, but put heavy emphasis on traditional soldiery as well. True to their credo, every Marine a rifleman, the Corps constantly honed its skills on the shooting range with the standard Springfield rifle and trained for close combat with the bayonet. Two skills that, while not left behind in the Great War, took a back seat to others in terms of general 1918 combat, where the machine gun and the hand grenade were thought of as the tools of the infantrymen. In early 1918, the huge German spring offensives, the Kaiserschlacht, had smashed into and through the Allied lines in Belgium and France. And as their Operation Blucher kicked off in late May, the Germans were soon less than 50 miles from Paris. Panic spread, even though the offensive was pretty clearly running out of steam, and the Allies urged the Americans to send in reinforcements. The Marines, as part of the 2nd American Division, were among those first reinforcements that were judged ready to be sent into action. Operation Blucher had created a large salient across the Anne River and into the French front lines from Rheims to Soissons, and the German army was trying to get a hold on strategically valuable positions from which to launch further attacks. Such a position was Bellow Wood. The first elements of the 5th Marine Regiment were rushed into the lines on June 2nd. They were greeted by exhausted French soldiers who suggested the Marines follow their retreat, to which Captain Lloyd Williams only retorted, retreat? Hell, we just got here. The French were by no means broken, but they had taken a hard hit, and the Americans had to take the defensive lead and dug in. The next day, as the Germans advanced from Bellow Wood over an open wheat field, they were unexpectedly met by highly accurate rifle fire and cut down in large numbers before hastily retreating back to the wood, probably wondering what the heck had just hit them. The German positions within Bellow Wood overlooked a wide area, and the small town of Bellow itself and its surroundings. And if an Allied counterattack was going to successfully eliminate the German salient, and drive them back over the Arm, their positions in Bellow Wood had to be taken. The next day, June 3rd, the Marines formed up in light order and marched over the same wheat field towards the woods to take it by storm. But as they marched into the open, they were suddenly hit by rifle and machine gun fire. Taking heavy casualties, the advance was quickly halted and the survivors pulled back. Clearly, the Americans were still green and they had to learn and learn fast. The Germans opposing them 
were veterans of the 4th Reserve Corps. Their commander was Major Josef Bischoff, a career soldier who had fought in the German Africa mission and was himself an experienced bushfighter. Although his men were suffering from exhaustion and chronic shortages of ammunition, shells and food, he was determined to put his experience to good use in the thick of the woods and carefully prepared his defenses. Thick undergrowth of bushes and large boulders were ideal hiding spots and the steep ravines and hills slowed down every advance. So while it was really difficult to maintain an attacking formation, it also was to maintain a static line of defense. Bello Wood was a place of small unit fighting. To break into Bello Wood, the Marines had to take the high ground and the villages outside the woods first. While French artillery blasted Bello Wood into an even more unmaneuverable maze, the men of the 5th Marines went into battle once again. On the 6th of June, they advanced towards the German positions on Hill 142, a major strong point that overlooked large parts of the woods. Again, they were met by entrenched machine guns and took heavy casualties in brutal fighting, especially after the German counterattack smashed into their advance. But the Marines prevailed. The hill was strewn with mutilated bodies from both sides, but it demonstrated that the Marines were not shaken by the effects of battle. Which was good, because this was only a taste of what was yet to come. On the 11th, another major attack began. While other Marine companies attacked from the north and south, the main force was again ordered to advance over the open wheat field. This time, though, they had the help of a heavy ground fog that shrouded the advancing Marines from the eyes of the German outposts until they were already on top of them. Bayonets first, the Marines stormed into the German trench lines, attacking at close range. In those woods, the men were cut off. The heavy fog made flare guns ineffective and telephone lines were already cut by the shelling. Only cold steel and personal bravery would prevail. The Americans were victorious in rolling up the forward defenses, but the Germans were not done yet. Vanishing in the bushes, they retreated to new defenses. The initial rush had cost the Marines dearly, and during the night, they were suddenly hit by 7,000 mustard gas shells, saturating their surroundings with deadly toxins. Still, they were determined to push on, NCOs leading the small platoons. Machine gun nests were stormed by all-or-nothing bayonet charges. Grenades exploded among trees and rocks, sending deadly splinters flying through the chaos of battle, and snipers targeted them from the treetops. But still, the Marines kept up their momentum. In fact, their aggressiveness was their best asset in those thick woods. More than once, they pushed through the German lines, then rolled up their defenses from the rear. In the spirit of Dan Daly, who just days before had spurred on his fellow Marines with the words, Come on, you sons of bitches! Do you want to live forever? The Marines surged forwards. Few prisoners were taken in these days of the war, if any. It was merciless, you or me. Close-range fighting, no room for quarter. After days of combat, the Germans had lost significant chunks of ground and finally broke on the evening of the 24th. They fled to their last fortified positions near the edge of the woods. The Marines, though, had to stop as well. Despite their success, the casualties had been high and thousands of Marines were either dead or wounded, among them Captain Williams, who had succumbed to gas and shrapnel wounds. It was now up to the heavy artillery to soften up the enemy first before the final attack could drive them from the wood. After a night of heavy shelling, the Marines moved out. Again, they met heavy machine gun and sniper fire. But after a few hours of heavy fighting, the battle was pretty much over. Ever more exhausted and demoralized Germans surrendered without a fight, and whole companies were captured by single men. By midday June 26, after 25 days of fighting, the last Germans in the wood were killed or captured. The report to American headquarters read, Woods now U.S. Marine Corps entirely. The fighting for Bellow Wood became an instant PR hit in the American media. Ecstatic newspaper headlines ran on how the Marines saved Paris and of how the vicious devil dogs, as they were called, were feared by the Germans. 
Belle Isle Wood was in many ways the birthplace of the modern U.S. Marine Corps, and the name Devil Dog stuck after the heavy fighting of those June days in 1918. It is not entirely clear if, and in fact it's even unlikely that the name Devil Dogs in German Teufelshunde has its roots in the actual engagement in Belle Isle Wood. The term Teufelshunde had already appeared in the La Crosse Tribune in Wisconsin on April 27th. And other newspapers attributed the Devil Dog name to German pilots who apparently cursed the accuracy of American anti-aircraft batteries with that name. But whatever the case, the Marines had taken the fight to the enemy and were ready and willing to accept heavy casualties to achieve victory. So the fighting at Belleau Wood might as well have earned them the nickname Devil Dogs. The ferociousness of the attack was a real contributor that summer to the breakdown of the morale of the Germans, who had erroneously thought of the Americans as incompetent farmers and cowboys that did not know how to fight. They were very much mistaken. Okay, now Devil Dogs is from the new album, The Great War. Yep. Yes, and one of the things that catched my attention while writing this song was the phrases that were supposedly said during this one. All right, you sons, sons of, of bitches. bitches. You wanna live forever, yeah. That one, yeah. and we even put it into the song. So when uh, Joachim was recording, he was like, and where do I sing this? <laughs> like, there are no melody for this. Oh, yeah. And I was like, no, that's just the feeling that you do yeah. when, when in this part. And he's like, ah, ah, then I know. Wait, can we hear that little bit? There we go. Shockingly as it is, I mean, when I'm writing something, I try to zoom in on the, on the maps and see what it is. Yeah. And then I'm like, this forest is so small, yeah. how could such a significant, brutal fighting happen around he this little area here? Yeah, yeah, sure. And then I looked at maps from World War I, yeah. and I realized that it was the same farms, yeah. the same fields. A lot of places you think were big were not that big. I mean, the whole of Verdun, this monster valley. You, you, can, you can walk it. You can walk it in an afternoon. I mean, it's the size of central Stockholm. That's not that big, you know. Wow for 800,000 people to lose their lives. And, and Bella would the same. I mean, yeah. you, you walk across it in a few minutes, yeah, not like, even half a day. Like, wait, 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 wait. Where's you, the rest of it? You can, you can watch it. You can oversee the whole thing. We also even went, before we met in Verdun, you remember yeah, that? Yeah, sure, we had We fun. stopped at Bella Wood Memorial. All right, okay. We were driving and this was actually not a stop. Planned. The publicist in France didn't even know that we had wrote the song because everything was secret at this time. And then I was watching while, where we were. And I'm like, Bella? Okay. So I was telling the driver, we need to take a little bit of a detour. And it's only going to take us 20 minutes and it's going to be important for the rest of our lives. It, is, it means a lot when we actually get to a place where we sing about, where it, we so yeah, sing sure. about. So, yeah. And now whose idea was, was, the, was the idea of of having a song about devil dogs for the album. Is that yours or Joachim's? Or? The, this song was written by me and um, we thought about naming it in the original German title, Teufel like Teufelhunde. Uh, but devil dogs just sounds better. Do you know, it, but it's a, there is a snack cake called devil dogs in the States. It's chocolate and it's got cream on the inside. It's, I don't know if, if it came after or before the Marines and stuff, but they're good though, they are good. I have to try that. Well, you'll be touring the States later this year, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you get, bring us back a box of devil dogs. I will so we can do like our review <laughs> with the whole band. We can get, get Tommy and, and Chris and Hannes here. And, and we all eat, devil, eat the devil, devil dogs. dogs. Well, since this is a song from the new album, can we hear another few seconds of that music? <laughs> July 19th, you'll be able to hear this song and the other songs on The Great War. And that is it for Sabaton History for today. See you next time. So if you are a patron, you can get the Sabaton albums in a very nice edition, featuring in the Nidel, autographed by us, and see you next time.